Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Club Junkie Podcast. It's another day. We're done with one holiday, and the other one, the biggest one of the year, is rapidly approaching. So it is uh, crazy to think that this is uh, done on the first day of December, which is is absolutely wild. But what are you going to do? Hopefully you guys had a great Thanksgiving. Uh, Everybody stayed safe, had a great time with family, friends, whatever you did. Uh, Before we get into today's episode, to let you know, this episode brought to you by Titleist and the new title is TSR Woods. So the hours have been put in, the work has been done. As the moment approaches, you either fear it or you feel it. For Titleist, it's a moment filled with pure anticipation, the culmination of a relentless pursuit of speed in every form. So step up and settle in with confidence. Titleist TSR is here. The new TSR drivers take everything that made TSI the number one driver on tour and pack even more performance into every head. From new face technologies to CG improvements and aerodynamic refinements, when everything moves the needle, you're playing at Titleist speed. Go to Titleist.com to learn more about TSR medals and to schedule your fitting today. Titleist TSR. Find your faster. So, yep, TSR uh, had it out on the course last week. Um, <laughs> had it out there with a couple drivers. I, uh, you know, or, or was it last week? Yeah, last week when... Uh, I went out and told everybody when I played, lost my keys, and um, yeah, I still haven't found them. They're gone. They're absolutely gone. So uh, that morning, uh, Thursday morning, just a little little update on the, the, the key saga that, that is my life. Um, went back uh, Thursday morning uh, with my wife, threw my daughter in the car, my wife. Went back to the course, drove around the parking lot in daylight uh, in the morning. Nothing. Uh, went out into the street uh, <laughs> where... Where I made like you know my right turn into the road from the parking lot, all that walking up and down the street. My wife's out there like basically carrying a coffee, walking down the street, looking you know near the curb on the grass, all that. Um, keys were gone, so we went up and you know basically retraced the whole path and uh, their history. So I guess uh, I will be paying the price of a new fairway wood to replace one of the key fobs to my <laughs> to my truck. Um, so it's great that I have a truck that I don't even really like, uh, that I've got to go pay like, you know, 250 or 300 bucks at a dealer to go get a new key fob and get a program and all that crap. Um, so that's going to sting. But just to, you know, keep everybody updated on uh, if you wanted to know, uh, we are still keyless. So I'm uh, rolling on one set of keys that I've got, uh, or the other key fob uh, that I've got, and, uh, you know, got one or two keys on there. Didn't get the new key fob for the office. So I was able to go in Monday. Uh, one of the guys let me in, and then I was able to get a new key fob. So I can get in and out of the office, um, but yeah, it's uh, unfortunate that it's, they're still not uh, still not around. So uh, a good week. It was busy. My weekend uh, last week after uh, after golfing and all that, um, getting out, uh, doing the Thanksgiving thing between family, and then we had some friends in on Friday. Um, what else did we do? We did something Saturday. Oh, I had some family over on Saturday. Uh, and then Sunday, I ended up going to all my parents' house to help my dad do a couple things around the house and it, their their house. So it was a crazy weekend. It was just like done in a flash. It was uh, you know was Wednesday evening hit, Thursday started, and like snap of the fingers, Monday I'm back at work. So it was just uh, it was a crazy time, but it was good. We had a good time, ate some great food. Uh, I do have to say, in my uh, in laws' credit, the the turkey this year was absolutely phenomenal, extremely juicy, uh, delicious, and you know all the fixings that went alongside it excellent as well so it was a great time ate uh like everybody usually does ate till i was overly full and you know watch some football um you know it was like i said overall a a good uh, good day watch the lions uh you know, my, my lions lose they made it a game against buffalo but uh, i think we all kind of expected them to lose might have been some clock issues uh, going there and then uh yeah back into it monday and we got the uh, the hero championship going on or hero challenge going on it should start up today and it'll be interesting. It kind of stinks. Tiger's out. Uh, it was kind of a bummer because I heard a little before the tournament that he was out, and then he announced on his own like you know social media that he was playing, and then plantar fasciitis, and he's out. <laughs> on Monday, we get the announcement that he's out, so that's a bummer. Um, I, I mean, realistically, unfortunately, with him not playing, that's probably going to have me not watch a whole lot of the hero. It's just not a big field. There's only a couple things that I really care to see uh, there, you know, which is to see, you know, what's in Kevin Kisner's bag, because the rumor is he's playing, playing, been testing out some new gear. Uh, I think Tursk and I talked about on TG2, uh, you know, two weeks ago. He's been testing out some new gear, so it'll be interesting to see what's in his bag uh, that tournament, and then also to see if 
you know, we already saw earlier this week, Morikawa uh, had a new set of blades and the new P7MCs in the bag. Um, he also had a P7CM, which is Kala Morikawa. So it looks like uh, there's a, you know, a couple new... I'll call them prototypes, uh, blades in there, but I think, you know, we, we assume it's going to be a P7 MB, uh, eventually it might even be on the, the USGA uh, conforming list already, but, um, you know, new blades, new irons from, uh, from TaylorMade. Uh, the thing with Tiger was kind of expecting, like, do we get a sneak peek at driver? Like, does it make it in the bag this week? Uh, I remember last year <clears throat> with stealth, I think we saw stealth, uh, not necessarily in his bag first, but he had it in the bag at the PNC. So it'll be interesting to see. Does he show up at the PNC with Stealth, or does he show up with whatever's next, Stealth 2, whatever it's going to be called, you know, uh, whatever is coming. It'll be interesting to see if it's in the bag uh, at that point. So, unfortunately, Tiger's not playing. Uh, still, I mean, there's, there's still big names in that field. It's just it's such a small field, and I'm just realistically, I'm probably not going to watch it. Um, you know, I'm, I, I know, like, I'm a golf junkie, but I may, you know, sit there. I know Turski's down there in the Bahamas this week. Him and I should uh, record, well, I'm recording on Wednesday night. He should, you know, be back. We should record tomorrow and talk about everything that he saw down there. Um, I will have one gripe about it. He went down there. I was super excited. I was like, hey, man, give me one of those Albany hats. You know, the one with a little A on them. Super hard flex if you have one. Not many people have them. They're tough to get. You know, people don't go down there a lot. He goes into the pro shop, rolls in. Sends me a picture. Every single hat has a little like Albany A on it, but then it's got this huge thing on the side that says like Hero Challenge on the side. And I was just like, you know what? I don't want it with the Hero Challenge on there. I just want the Albany hat. So uh, I was just like, you know what? Unfortunately, uh, told him to skip it and uh, save myself, you know, fifty bucks or whatever those things cost. So, but a little bummed. I was super excited to get something with uh, like that 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 club, you know, logo on it or whatever. But I guess it's just not meant to be. So uh, he did, uh, thankfully, uh, send me a little, uh, some in-hand, uh, zoomed-in photos of, of Tiger's watch, uh, which he was wearing a Rolex Sea Dweller Deep Sea, which is their one of their heaviest-duty diving watches. I know now they've come out with like a Deep Sea Challenge that's even more crazy, uh, but it's something like uh, goes down to 12,000, or rated to go down to 3,000 meters, or like 12,800 feet in terms of diving depth. I don't think any humans ever dove but, uh, beyond like... A little over a thousand feet. <laughs> this thing's ready to go like twelve thousand eight hundred. So it's a it's a big watch. It's pretty crazy what it does. Um, and then uh, <clears throat> yeah, it was pretty cool. And it's the older version, which is I mean interesting. So I mean I got oh, people don't care about watches even though we're here. But it was funny because he wore a Sea Dweller Deep Sea James Cameron, also called the Deep Blue, which had a, a kind of a blue dial that was blue and faded to black uh, on the dial. Super popular. It kind of celebrated James Cameron going down to the bottom of the Marianas, uh, the Marianas Trench. Um, and that's what he wore all the time. He wore it like every day. It was just the watch he wore. And, and every time he won or whatever, I do the little What's on the Wrist Instagram account and article on the front page uh, of Golf WRX. And it stunk because he just wore the same watch every time. But right after the accident, he went back to this all black version. So black bezel, black dial. Um, and he's been wearing that literally every day now. Like, that's just his go-to. And I wonder if that deep blue got damaged uh, or something. Something happened to it uh, when he, you know, when he got in that accident. Because it was, you know, right after the accident, he stopped wearing it. So I wonder if it got damaged there or something happened to it. Uh, and then he just, you know, went in the drawer, pulled out this, you know, this other sea dweller, and that's it. Um, and, it's, and it's funny, too, because there's a brand new James Cameron that just came out, uh, a 2022 model. Uh, that literally just came out, and, you know, he's not wearing that. So maybe Tiger's like all of us. He's gets stuck on the wait list. <laughs> he's on the waiting list at his local Rolex AD, uh, waiting on the, the 136660, uh, the new model of uh, James Cameron, and he just hasn't got it yet. He's waiting for the call, like uh, like all of us. But uh, pretty interesting that he's, uh, that it, you know, like I said, wearing a different watch. He's been wearing it for a while, and I wonder what the story is behind it. So... That's all I've got from tour, really. Um, I know Tursky and I will talk about stuff on TG2 from, you know, the few things that he did see uh, down there. For me, um, you know, like I said, I did play uh, some golf last week, uh, right before, on Wednesday, the day before Thanksgiving, I got out and played. Um, and the rest of my weekend, I didn't pretty much touch a club. I did a little club work here and there, uh, like today, you know, threw a tailor-made tip on a shaft for a guy at the office and stuff like that. But 
been pretty uh, hands off. It's been uh, like today was insane windy and uh, and very cold. So I'm not playing golf today. Uh, even if I could have got out and done it, not happening. <laughs> it's brutal. Uh, but today I'm going to talk about two different things that I've got. Um, so the first one uh, that I'm going to chat about is actually a product that I kind of knew about. I found out about maybe was it last year, or the year before. Um, but a pretty n- a newer company, a little smaller, and they basically set out to make what uh, they consider the ultimate uh, high quality rangefinder. And uh, if you're not familiar with uh, the company, excuse me, it's called Cobalt Golf or Cobalt. Uh, so these guys here uh, basically are trying to make super high end. Uh, range finders, you know, if you're watching this on YouTube, you've got the nice little case. Uh, it's kind of got to get elongated case, kind of, you know, reminds you a little bit of a, a, um, a longer rectangle shape. I know a lot of cases that you get from, uh, from a lot of these companies make range finders. It's kind of more of a box and you kind of go lens down, uh, or eyepiece down. Uh, this one, you put it in sideways <clears throat> into their nice little case, but it's well built. Uh, it's got a little kind of flex thing in the middle that almost looks like it has a zipper in there, but I don't see where you would unzip or, you know, zip anything. The ring on it where you attach it to your bag or cart or whatever on the outside is pretty darn hefty. It is going to hold on through just about anything, and then it does have uh, two little uh, fabric uh, kind of straps on the back that uh, you could run um, you know, some type of strap through to, uh, to attach it to a bag. So a couple different mounting options. Um, and then of course, like most, the quick release little elastic strap to open the case, you flip it open and inside is a black, blue and, uh, you know, black and blue rangefinder. Uh, the inside of the case is pretty nice. It's nice and kind of fuzzy, well-lined, um, a pretty nice case, pretty firm, should protect it pretty well. And then you open it up and you've got the cobalt Q6 slope. Uh, rangefinder and uh, these guys set out to basically make a super nice rangefinder they did not go out to say that we're going to make the cheapest rangefinder uh, or the you know craziest value rangefinder anything like that Uh, they basically said we're going to make something super high quality between lenses construction all that stuff Uh, they basically set out just to make something super nice Uh, so this thing is you know I, i will say it is not cheap uh the slope version's 450 dollars uh, on their website if you go to cobalt hyphen golf.com uh and then they make a non-slope version that's that's four hundred dollars so 450 for slope 400 for non-slope and of course with the slope one you can turn slope on and off um it does kind of have this interesting little dial on the side which uh when i first saw it i was kind of like you know what do you use the dial for uh well the dial's got a couple different functions there's a button on it that lets you switch between yards and meters So if you're, you know, a European player or something like that, or you just prefer to go by meters, uh, you can basically select meters or yards on the side. And then the blue little dial uh, that you see on the other side of the case is actually a brightness uh, dial. So when you look through the scope or the eyepiece, uh, everything there is illuminated red. So everything's red. Uh, it's all illuminated, and you can actually change the brightness of it. So you can make it crazy bright. You can make it, you know, definitely pretty close, pretty dull. Uh, depending on what your needs are, what the light conditions are, you can kind of adjust it um, to your liking, which is kind of cool, kind of nice. I've never really thought about it. I do personally really like the look of the red uh, through the eyepiece. I've been, I was using a Nikon uh, Cool Shot for a long time, and that thing had the uh, the red, uh, kind of red sights, all the red display. I really like it. I feel like, especially I play a lot of my rounds early in the morning or even now, like kind of, you know, later at night into dusk. And I feel like black sometimes is hard, especially like if you play like Michigan, like at least where on some of the courses I play, like Bella Vista and all that, you kind of shoot some holes are just in the trees and you're shooting at a flag in the trees and trying to decipher between the darkness, the shade of the trees, the dark trunks of the trees, and then a flag and all that. And then the, you know, the black markings looking through the eyepiece, it's sometimes just hard to line it up on your target, on the pin. And I found the red, I line it up a little better. I'm a little more accurate with it. I can kind of hit those targets a little better. And, you know, it it shows up a little easier against these darker backgrounds or hazy, hazy, hazier uh, backgrounds. So I've personally been a big fan of the red. I know some people, that's not their thing, um, but this one is red. There is no option to change it. Uh, I know, I think it was like Shotscope or somebody had an option where you could go between red and black. Uh, This one is red and red only. Um, and then on the side also, which is kind of cool, they've got the, uh, you know, a little slope switch 
and it's basically on or off. And when it's on, you actually see uh, a little red light that's on. So you know you're using slope. So it's pretty nice that if you are like a tournament player and you need to turn that off, it's pretty easy to tell that it's off. There's no red light on the side. And it's actually like a physical switch, and it actually clicks over pretty nice. It feels pretty firm. Um, the the dial has a nice click to it. As a, I'm going to put it up next to the mic so you can kind of hear it. And it's... Uh, like that, it actually got a nice click. So even if you're like changing the brightness, like you know, as you get it into a setting, like it, it has a nice little click there. Um, on the top, it's just got one single button uh, to basically to hit, to hit it, and the button there again, pretty solid feel to it. It's uh, you can tell that it, it's like rubber over a button, uh, so it's it is waterproof. I think when you're on Cobalt site, they list it as like IPX7 um, waterproof, which I don't know 100% what that actually means. I know it is pretty waterproof though. Um, and then the whole thing is made, or not the whole thing, but, but but a majority of the thing, the top of the case, all that, is actually made from aluminum. Uh, it's metal. It's not just plastic. Uh, and then on the sides, outside the aluminum, uh, it's it's got a magnesium chassis, aluminum uh, kind of casing on the top, and then everything else you see is kind of rubberish. I mean, it actually has a little uh, rubber feel to it. You can feel it. You can give it. You know, it has little gives. So if you do bump it into something or actually knock it into something, it should take uh, a lot of that shock uh, pretty easily. Um, and then, the, you know, you have the, the back of the eyepiece and battery uh, opening, battery's already in there. Uh, when you do unbox it, you just have to, like, unscrew that. There's a little plastic piece that stops the, you know, stops the battery from, from being used. You slide that out, screw down the battery latch again, and you're ready to go. So really, I mean, as soon as you unbox it, you do the that one thing, you know, so unscrew the, uh, the battery case, take that little plastic piece out, you're ready to go play golf. So there's not much to it. Um, optics on it are pretty good. Uh, I do have to say there's some, uh, you know, some rangefinders that do kind of dull. I don't know if they're necessarily tinted on purpose, or whatever, for being played in typically brighter conditions. Uh, but some of them do have kind of a dull, uh, look to them. This one here, uh, has pretty clear optics and it's not very tinted. I mean, everything from pretty much what you see is, is, you know, through with your own eyes is pretty much what you're going to see through the, the lens. It's not very tinted. It's not very dull. Um, I'm unfortunately wasn't able to play with it yet in like super, super bright conditions to see if that causes any issues, but I don't see where it would. Like, I'm not looking directly at the sun. I'm not looking at anything. I don't think that's going to be crazy reflective or anything like that. Um, but the optics on it are very clear and I like how it isn't like a darker look through it. It isn't, doesn't seem to be tinted or anything like that. Uh, it does have like kind of a, a true look to it when you look out of it and uh it, it doesn't uh it, and i think it's a little easier to see the flag uh with it because like i said i've had i've used a plethora of range finders from you know when you name the brand for the most part and some of them do like they just they have a darkness to them and sometimes depending on that certain light conditions it's tough to see the flag and uh, this one here i was able to see the flag from pretty much any yardage whether it was you know over 200 yards to you know any you know anything inside you know right around 100 anything like that easy to pick up the flag like I said, I like the illuminated uh, red uh, markings inside of it. The little aiming uh, target is a little rectangle, and it's actually a pretty decent size. Like when you're shooting it at the flag, it, it, it gives you a decent size. Of, you know, you don't have to be. I feel like with some of the ones that are just a little cross, uh, it, it, it feels like you feel like you have to be so perfect. You have to be so perfect on the flag stick. Uh, this one here, it's got a little rectangle and. You don't have to feel like you're as perfect on there. <laughs> like it did when you shoot it, you feel like you got a little bit of wiggle room. And, you know, when you're 200 plus yards out, you know, you, especially when it's a little chilly, you got a little shade going on and having a little uh, extra room uh, in there is, is always helpful. Uh, when you do click the button, you'll see kind of four uh, little hash marks in the corner uh, of that of that rectangle kind of light up to show that it's like shooting out. Um, and then you get your yardage pretty much right away. Um Everything was accurate. I had my Nikon, Nikon out with this. If anything, I mean, you maybe saw something that was, you know, I think at most, I I, I don't think there was anything over a yard difference uh, that I saw on there because both of these things shoot, you know, point yardages. So you can get 7.3 or 7.5 or, you know, 130.5, whatever it is, uh, you get that in there. So uh, accuracy was really good. Uh, seemed to be spot on next to my Nikon, which I've trusted for, you know, a couple of years now, uh, but it, pretty nice there. And then it also does have uh, a little lock on uh, option in there. So when you um, when you do lock onto the pin, you do get a little surge, and then you also get a little 
icon around the rectangle, so like almost a secondary rectangle on top, so you know you locked onto the pin instead of locking onto like a tree or whatever else is behind, you know, the, the beverage cart girl or whatever. You're not locking onto something that's not uh, the flag stick. So uh, it has that. <clears throat> they say uh, on here um, it'll basically go um, 600 yards to a pin, which, I mean, if you're able to hit it 600 yards, that's pretty darn good. Um, I never used it over anything over like 240 or something like that. <laughs> but it was, uh, it, was, it was doing well there. Um, it's, uh, yeah, like I said, goes like 600 plus yards, which is crazy. Um, I think to the pin, uh, I think to a tree, they said it'll go like 2000 yards. Um, I didn't try that. I didn't, I don't think, I, I don't think on St. Clair Shores golf course, there's a, an area where you can even get it to 2000 yards to, to, to zap something, but for normal yardages, it worked really well. Uh, the pin kind of seeking technology, like I said, where it kind of lets you know that you hit the pin, uh, worked really well. Uh, like I said, I mean, between this and my Nikon, it was, uh, super easy to kind of hit those targets, hit those pins, uh, and getting that little bit of, uh, you know, that little notification that you did hit the pin, uh, is, is always nice. I mean, it's always, you know, brutal when you're lasering something and it comes up like, you know, 60 yards longer than you think. And then you realize you're hitting, you know, some object behind the green. Um, uh, so it is nice that this thing, uh. Uh, hits that pretty well. Uh, this one is the slope one, so I played with it slope on. Unfortunately, golf uh, or uh, St. Clair Shores is not really that much different, and <laughs> or not, or not that doesn't have that much uh, elevation. It's pretty darn flat, so you saw two, three yards maybe at the most uh, on some of the shots, but you know, so slope on here. Unfortunately, I don't have really access to go to play something with a crazy amount of slope, um, but you know, much like the Nikon, I mean, it was adding the two maybe one and a half, whatever yards, and they were all, again, pretty darn close. Uh, there was nothing really over maybe like a yard difference when it did the calculation. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, like I said, the display is pretty nice. It's got a battery meter in the lower hand, um, or the lower left, so you know battery-wise what you're doing. And then, uh, yeah, it's, uh, like I said, pretty uh, a, pr a pretty nice unit. The interesting thing, being aluminum on the top, uh, I played with it, and it was, you know, chilly here. It's not that warm. It was 40-some degrees. It actually was kind of cold. Like, that was kind of one thing that was very interesting because I picked it up, uh, you know, taken out of the car. I think the first hole I used it on, it was still pretty warm. Uh, but I got to, like, the, you know, the third, fourth hole, something like that, and I pulled it out, and I was like, man, this thing's kind of cold on the hand. And, you know, part of it being it's an aluminum outside. So um, the nice thing I think about with the build quality of it, it seems super nice. It should be super durable uh, as long as you don't lose it. I, I think this thing will last a long, long time. It does have a, a lifetime warranty into it. And, uh, uh, it, like I said, built, built really, really well. You can tell it's definitely not a, a, a cheap piece, uh, for them to build. Uh, I will give it one knock. It, it doesn't have a battery or a battery, a, a magnet, uh, on the one side, which I think now I've kind of become a, I've kind of become a snob about, uh, my Nikon one doesn't have one either, which I don't like. I had to go buy like one of those little straps. Um, the downside with this one is that a strap for, you know, they make these straps that have magnets on one side, so you can, you know, put it on the side of a cart. But this one, the downside is it's got the little brightness dial, so putting a strap around it, uh, it won't f probably fit as well as other straps will. So I don't know. I, I haven't tested mine out. Mine's kind of small. I don't know if it'll fit on here. Um, this is a little bigger uh, rangefinder than, than say, like, like I said, say my Nikon. But the one knock that I'll give it, that I give it to the Nikon as well, my cool shot no magnet on the side, which is kind of a bummer, so you can't just stick it on the side of the cart. Uh, on the plus side of that, it, it's a little harder to lose then uh, because you're probably going to use the case and you're probably going to stick it on your, either your bag or you know in the uh, console somewhere of the cart, and you'll probably remember it that way. Uh, I have, you know, like everyone else, I have almost walked away, and I don't think I've lost one yet, but I've come really, really close to uh, losing one on the side of a cart. So... Little downside, I wish it had that. Other than that, I don't think there's, I mean, there's nothing else you can, you know, really, there's no other really complaints to this thing. It, it is really good. Worked really well. Uh, it, it locks on and it gives you yardages pretty much instantly. Uh, it's really quick. It doesn't take a long time. Even with the, the slope option on, it doesn't really change. As soon as you hit the target, it's there. You can hit trees, whatever, the same way. I mean, I, I would, you know, I, I tend to do that a lot is just to see, uh, you know, a tree or, you know, some piece of, Something out there that you want to your yardage to, especially on like a dog leg, something like that, it'll hit all those, give you accurate yardages, and uh, overall just a really solid unit. It performed really well in 40 degree weather, uh, but the time I was done playing, it was probably 
the house probably 40 something degrees and uh, it performed great so other than being a little cold on the hand uh, it worked with no problem uh, it was by the, like i said the end of the day it was a little dark a little hazy yardages were super perfect and actually i think i ended up turning down the brightness because it was so bright uh, i ended up turning it down a little bit uh, as you went through the holes but that is the kind of nice thing about the brightness is that on a super sunny day you can kind of crank up the brightness a little bit make sure you can see what your your you know where your target is and then also you know in a low light when you're playing at dusk or super early in the morning you can turn that brightness down when you don't need it and have uh you know something that's a little easier on the eyes so um if you go to like i said cobalt hyphen golf or cobalt yeah hyphen golf.com uh they've got like i said the two different models q6 q6 slope so depending on what you need uh but really built well uh and kind of nice and has some nice features that uh, i have not uh seen much of in the rangefinder world but uh, a pretty solid unit and something if you're looking for you know you know you you mess with some some cheaper options that you know i've i've seen some of the hundred dollar ones and all that and i felt them and they just feel super cheap and, and they kind of have some some flex or even you know some creaking if you grab them too hard with the plastic pieces fitting together uh this has absolutely none of that it will it, it is definitely really really solid so like i said cobalt hyphen golf check out the q6s the q6 q6 six slope um if you're looking for a range finder um you know like i said i know it's not uh the cheapest option out there but i think it's one of those that it will last you a long long time uh if you do add it to the bag so uh, i wish you could go super in depth there but i mean range finders they kind of that's what they are they kind of do their thing so <laughs> it's uh as long as they're accurate and they kind of work that's pretty much what you're you're, you're hoping for, but uh, this one here is uh, is, is it, it is super nice. It, it's you know kind of related to a car, like you know you you close the door on like a, a Chevy or whatever, and then you close the door on like a Mercedes, and there's a little difference there in terms of build quality. Uh, and no knock to anybody from Chevy. My brother works for GM, but uh, you can kind of tell there's a little difference there between you know something inexpensive and something much more expensive. So kind of the same way here with uh, the way they built that uh, that Q6. So. Cobalt Golf Q6 Slope Rangefinder. Um, the next item I've got is unfortunately not a club either. And we're going to go uh, stick with the kind of electronic type thing and uh, or electronic category. And we're going, the people from uh, Samsung reached out and they have a Galaxy Watch. So this is the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro Golf Edition. So uh, I... <laughs> You know, I'm, I'm a big watch guy. I like watches. And uh, I was like, you know what? I would love to, you know, they asked if I wanted to try one out. I said, yes, I definitely would. Um, I do not get to keep it. I'm sending this back. So it's not like I'm getting something free here. I'm sending this back. So don't think that I'm uh, skewed here by my view of it. Um, but yeah, Samsung Galaxy Watch 5 Pro Golf Edition. And it is basically, uh, a, a, you know, the Galaxy 5 or Galaxy Watch 5 Pro with a couple different faces, uh, a, a different strap uh, that that comes that, that it comes on there, and then you get a free, I think it's lifetime, uh, lifetime membership to this to Smart Caddy, uh, which is kind of an app that does GPS, you know, tracking, uh, kind of all that stuff. Uh, when you pop it open, there's a thing in here that has uh, the charger, and uh, what does it have in here? I think it's the charger and something else in here. I think the manuals, all that. Uh, are in this little box here uh, and then you have the watch itself uh, over in the other box there. it's got all the manuals all that jazz as well as uh, the charging now the charging is interesting because they don't give you like the brick that goes into the uh, uh, into the wall and it is USB type C so there is a little downside in that because USB Type C. I don't really the only the only brick I have for that that is USB C at least in my arsenal at the moment uh, is the one from my MacBook Pro, which I don't know if they're compatible. I didn't try plugging it into that, <laughs> but I don't have a brick that's USB C. Everything I have is either iPhone or micro USB, um, and I think I'm naming these things right. I am. I used to be really into like a lot of the high tech and tech stuff and all that. I've kind of fallen out of that as I've gotten older. But uh, but it's USB C and everything I have is not that it's it's traditional USB, uh, so I would, I would have to plug it into my computer, uh, my MacBook Pro to charge it because that's the only thing I had that was USB C. Um, so that was a little bit of a bummer because if I didn't have, if I had my old MacBook Pro 
uh, that I had before, I, I wouldn't. I, I, I don't. I'd have to like figure out a way to charge it because I wouldn't really have a way. So um, that part was a little bit of a bummer. So no, going into it, you're going to need a USB C charger. Uh, so the little brick that goes into the, in, you know into an outlet, you're going to have to either buy one of those or hopefully have a computer or something. Maybe your phone. Whatever. I know a lot of things are converting over to that. I have an old iPhone that is not USB C yet. So I don't have that option. <laughs> so, you know, my, I have an iPhone 11. So it's still using the old Lightning stuff and all that. So it's, uh, like I said, that was the one interesting thing when I pulled it out. I went to charge it and I was like, oh, that's great. I'm going to have to figure out a way. Thankfully, like I said, my computer uh, had it. And then you pull out uh, the watch itself and you've got this kind of nice white rubber strap. Uh, it's white and black rubber. Uh, it's got the quick release uh, strap on it, so it's got just a little peg that you can pull back and quickly change out straps if you you know were to go buy different straps. Uh, if you wanted something that was like all black or a brown or something else to kind of wear, uh, it has that. Uh, it's a pretty large watch. It's 45 millimeters, which is pretty decent size. Uh, and then this thing here is, uh, I believe, all titanium on the outside. It's it is ti it, it's titanium, but it's not crazy crazy light. I mean, it's light. But there's a lot going on inside here. And again, at 45 millimeters, um, I don't know what size my wrist is, but it definitely does take up a good amount of wrist. And the other thing that, that, that it is, is it's it's kind of tall. It sits up off your wrist uh, a decent amount. So, like I was wearing it uh, when I went and played, and I was wearing a couple layers. I was wearing, you know, kind of a base layer and then a long sleeve, uh, a long sleeve t-shirt or a long sleeve, yeah, t-shirt. Um, and then I had a vest, but getting it underneath that stuff is a little interesting because it is, does sit up so tall. So if you're wearing stuff that's a little more form fitting or layered as you play, it, it's going to be interesting how it fits. Um, it was fine, but it definitely is noticeable, especially when you first put those layers on, uh, that it does kind of interact and sleeves will hit it and it's a little harder to get under a sleeve, uh, or if you kind of take note to get it under a sleeve uh, when you do put it on. Uh, if you have a bigger wrist, it'll probably fit great. If you have a really small wrist, uh, it is pretty, you know, like I said, it is pretty large. Um, like I said, 45 millimeters, pretty decent size. Uh, and then basically you have two buttons on the side, uh, one kind of green, the other one's black. The green one there is kind of your power button. I, of course, uh, you know, I, I, I wore it, put it back in the box because uh, I need to ship it back and now it of course, dead for this video, but uh, the charge actually held pretty decently uh, as you were using it. Um, you know, I would say for me, uh, I, I mean, I had it synced up to my phone, all that. Um, Charge-wise, I mean, I could easily get through like two days before needing to, uh, to to recharge it. And then especially depending on what you're doing, too. If you're playing a lot of golf, uh, you know, you may not, you know, you're probably going to get a little less time out of it. Uh, whereas, you know, if you're, you know, just using it as an everyday, you know, smartwatch, you may get a little more out of it as well. Uh, the touch screen there is pretty responsive. I mean, when you get your hand, you know, your thumb on there, your finger, and you kind of scroll through the uh, the menus, everything moves pretty quickly. Um, it does take a second to boot up. Not that bad, but a second to boot up. But the screen is, like I said, pretty responsive and pretty clear. And you can read it in direct sunlight. You can read it in, you know, nighttime, low light. Uh, either way, uh, whatever they've done to this screen here, it, it definitely is easy to read out in the sun uh, on the course. Uh, I didn't, I was unfortunately didn't get to play with it in direct full-blown sunlight, uh, but I did have it out on my wrist as just kind of wearing it, uh, you know, taking pictures, things like that in the sunlight, and it was, you know, no problem reading it. Uh, you know, glare, because it is a gloss screen, you could get a little glare off the sun, like when I was taking pictures, you could see, like, a little bit of glare that uh, that you would get, or a little bit of, you know, reflection of yourself or the, the, the phone in there. Um, it looks way more reflective off, like, right now, than it is when it's on. When it's on, it takes away some of that. Um, on the back of it, it's got, of course, got the little sensor, so you could do kind of all the body stuff. Uh, and the fitness stuff, so it'll go through and read your heartbeat. It'll go through and do a little, I think it actually even had like a little like EKG thing on there. Um, it would do like a body mapping thing to probably tell you that I'm way overweight. Uh, but it has, you know, all the functions of a smartwatch. So you can sync it up to your phone, get text message notifications, email, all that kind of stuff comes through. And, you know, you could wear this as an everyday smartwatch. It does all those things. I mean, you can you know download a ton of apps. It's got a bunch of apps already loaded into it. But you can download an absolute ton of apps as well. Um, they actually were kind enough to send me a phone to go with it. So I, I messed around with the, uh, um, I think it was the S22 
uh, phone or that, that they sent. Um, so I did connect it up to this just to use it for the golf stuff. I didn't, you know, I wasn't using it, excuse me, for the text message stuff, all that. Um, it just, you know, it wasn't my phone, so I wasn't going to load it up with a bunch, you know, bunch of stuff. Um, and then, like I said, with this one here, you, if you do buy it, you do get this lifetime membership with Smart Caddy. Um, the Smart Caddy software looks pretty cool. I didn't sign up for it just because I knew I was not going to, like, purchase it. I didn't purchase this, so I wasn't going to, you know, go through a full year of it. Um, but I was using, uh, um, what was it? Uh, the, I was using uh, the Grint because I've used uh, that before with other stuff. Um, so I was using that with here just to use on the course. Uh, I tried to use the, uh, the tag Hoyer, uh, version as well, since it was, you know, they're both, uh, Wear OS, which is Google's operating system, uh, but it wouldn't actually let me connect to it, which I was a little bummed. I was hoping I could like, you know, beat the system that way, but it, <laughs> it wouldn't let me. Um, but I did use the, the, the Grint software on there, uh, and it worked really well. Uh, the connectivity was pretty quick, um, set up when you first get it. Uh, did take me like a minute to get it connected and all that. And I think only reason it took me a little bit longer is because I was connecting it to an Android phone and I haven't used an Android phone in probably six years. Um, I've been an you know, Apple guy for, for a long, long time. So it did take me a few minutes to get it set up. And I think a lot of that was just navigating through kind of the Android side on the phone to get everything synced up and updated. Once there, uh, it worked really well. The uh, Like I said, getting it connected up, if you're an Android user, it's probably going to take you like, two minutes to get it actually up and set up it, it basically especially I mean, maybe it's because it's samsung phone samsung watch they both found each other almost instantly and that was it so uh the gps side worked really well um i do have to say the one downside is i was using my you know push cart my my electric push cart my moto caddy and the downside is i found out that with that app at least the grant and i don't know about i don't know necessarily about smart caddy but the phone had to be within talking distance of the watch and i would run the you know as i'm walking i just i'm talking to people and stuff like that and i just run the cart up in front of me and it goes farther than the bluetooth connections there so i would have to go through and reconnect a lot and hit the you know on the watch it would kind of pop up and say it lost connection with the phone and you'd have to hit the the button to reconnect and it was it, it was a little bit annoying and eventually i, I wised up and just threw the phone in my back pocket which is fine but i don't personally like doing that um if you're somebody who doesn't mind or you're riding in a cart where you're not going to be that far away uh from your phone uh it, it works really well and the gps side of it uh was pretty solid uh it worked really well accuracy seemed really good um when i was out there i mean in terms of lasering things to um to gps it's hard to make that 100 percent direct comparison because you know the front middle back yardages were always, you know, seem to be pretty spot on when you're lasering the flag, the flag's not necessarily always in the middle. So you can't necessarily say, Oh, this is two yards longer than, you know, the range finder or two yard shoulder or whatever. You can't say that because it, it's, it's really hard to lazy laser something that is either you're trying to laser a green, which is on a weird angle and all that, or you're trying to laser a pin that isn't necessarily dead center of the green, but the yardages seem really good uh, where we were standing and, and what I would laser compared to what was showing on the on the watch was always very consistent with terms of of what it seemed to be like you know if you laser something and, and you know the middle yard is 160 you laser the flag is 165 you know and then you get up to the green you could tell the, the pin was a little further back on the green so you know i wasn't wasn't walking it off but it was pretty darn close um everything there was definitely within uh within acceptable except with yardages. Um, but overall, it worked really well. The strap's pretty comfortable. It stays in place really well. Um, the it, it uh, I kind of like the, uh, you know, as you put it through the pin buckle, it kind of folds itself underneath the uh, underneath itself. So there's no extra little um, retainer or anything like that on top of the uh, on top of the band. Uh, the band's pretty comfortable. It's got a little stretch to it. It's got a little flex to it. It should stay uh, in place for pretty much you know, all the time. Again, it's a little cold here, so not being able to put it on and, and really sweat through it or anything like that to see if it moves. Um, now, this band here, it's pretty darn comfortable. I think with the size of the watch, it does leave a little gap, you know, where the, the, the band starts to come down onto my wrist. Uh, so there's a little gap there, and you'd have to, you know, make it a slight bit tighter than I would like uh, to make sure that it wasn't going to move through the swing. It never did once I got it, you know, got it tight enough. I will say that the Tag Heuer version, which is, again, much more expensive than this, probably about two grand more than this, does have a little more comfortable band. Uh, the micro adjustments that they have on that band just make it fit 
insanely well, but this one fits pretty good. And I, and I like that it has the, uh, the curved ends, uh, at, at the lugs. So it does match the case. So when you look at it, it, it kind of looks a little more seamless. Um, but overall the performance of the watch was really solid and it's kind of nice that you have something that you can wear every day and use it for everything. You know, whether you're, uh, want email notifications or you want to track your fitness or you want to, you know, respond to text messages, whatever, uh, it, it, it's really uh, a nice watch and it seems to be well built. Like I said, titanium case, it's got a nice little, like on the one side, you almost can't even see it, but it says like golf edition kind of etched into the one side. Um, but the menus are pretty good. There's a ton of options in here. Uh, in terms of what you can do right out of the box. And like I said, there's a, a bunch of apps you can add. Um, I was actually a little shocked, though, at how few, you know, it, like I said, you're, you're probably going to use the Smart Caddy app because it's it's free for lifetime, so you're probably going to use that. Uh, you know, I, I don't see why you wouldn't. Uh, but I was kind of shocked that there weren't more and more uh, apps that would work on the watch uh, than I thought. Like like Arcos, you couldn't use. I was trying to, you know, look at apps that I'd use. I mean, the big ones are on there, like 18 Birdies, the Grint. Um, you know, smart caddy, there, there's a bunch, but like stuff like Arcos and some of those like don't actually work with, uh, um, with this watch, which is, which was a little unfortunate because if you're somebody who's already into an ecosystem, uh, you know, you, you will have to possibly switch if you're not using one that's supported here. But, uh, but like I said, the little nice touches of like, you know, quick release straps and, um, you know, a good looking, you know, screen that's visible for, uh, through pretty much any weather condition. Uh, it is you know, water resistant as well. Um, I didn't, you know, swim with it or anything like that. So I'm going to assume that stuff, uh, stuff all works. Uh, but yeah, it's got sleep trackers and all that stuff. Um, and yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty, uh, a pretty nice watch. Uh, now it is, um, you know, it, it's not crazy cheap. I will say the, the watch five pro golf edition, uh, right now, if like I'm on Samsung site, it's three ninety nine. So it's, it, it's 400 bucks. Uh, but if you look at some of the high end GPS watches that are out there, they're probably a little bit cheaper than this and they may not do near as much. Um, you know, if they're, especially if they're just, you know, golf only or, uh, have limited uh, abilities when it comes to the fitness side and, and some of the notification stuff from your smartphone or whatever. Um, this one here definitely can do just about, just about everything. So, you know, at that price, if it's something where you're going to wear it as a regular, you know, as an everyday watch, as well as, you know, for golf, uh, you know, I don't think that price is out of line. Now, I will knock Samsung for the fact that when you go on their website and you just go into, like, the wearables part and it lists all their watches, this thing comes up as, like, 234 bucks or something like that. And you're like, wow, $234. Like, that's pretty cheap. And then they do a – or I'm sorry, like, it comes up as, like, 100 and – $59, one time you know, $159 when it comes up on their website when you're like, wow, 159 bucks. And then you realize that they automatically put in like a trade-in amount of up, like they, you can trade in like a previous device, like whether it's a Samsung or an, I, an, an iWatch or whatever, and they put it automatically in there and then you have to select no trade-in and then it jumps up to 400 bucks, which is a little, little shady in my opinion, but it is still uh, a, a really nice, well-made watch, and <clears throat> especially if you pair it up with the, the the Android phone, which that Samsung phone is really nice. Um, I didn't use it much other than for the golf stuff. It took pretty nice pictures, though. I didn't say the camera's pretty nice, but I wasn't using it for much other than that. Um, it's just one of those things where I haven't used it in forever. It's a little more, it's just different than iOS uh, from Apple, so I wasn't into, like, learning all the little nuances and differences that I'd have to do there. So, um, but the watch-wise, like I said, really nice. Um, it's, it's a really solid piece and, you know, it, it does, uh, it, it does re work really well outdoors. So, uh, you know, in terms of, if, you know, if you're looking for a watch that you can do golf, you can do GPS, and then you can do all your other stuff, you know, for, like I said, fitness and everyday life, business, whatever, um, you know, this thing does it all and it's, uh, it, it's a pretty nice unit. So, um, yeah, this is the golf, the, the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro Golf Edition. So, um, like I said, it's got a couple different uh, faces on there that have little golf logos and stuff like that that you can swap through. Um, and then, like I said, the, the kind of the strap on here uh, gives it that golf edition look. You can buy a standard Watch 5 Pro, or, you know, Watch 5 Pro for the same amount of money with a slightly different strap. Um, and then I don't think you get the same faces <clears throat> that you can get with the, the, the golf edition, but, uh, you know, price wise, the same as the, the Galaxy watch, watch five pro. So, um, overall pretty cool unit. Like I said, if I, if I was definitely going the smart watch route, um, you know, 
I would I would definitely take a look at this thing. It's uh, it's pretty cool. It's uh, it's a nice unit. I would probably dive even deeper into it from there. But uh, like I said, overall it's pretty re- pretty well built, uh, and it uh, it seems to do pretty much anything that you'd uh, that you'd want it to do. So yeah, the uh, smart watch. If you go to uh, you know Samsung.com, you know they'll be able to you'll be able to go find it there and and see all the. Uh, all the specs, all the details, again, be a little wary of the price that comes up because I was kind of like, wow. Like, I think when I first got it, and right now I think they're doing, like, an extra promotion on it because it's, like, holiday, uh, like, it's Cyber Week. But when I first looked at it, I was like, wow, this thing's only, like, 250 bucks. I was like, this is a really good deal. And then realized that they kind of do that thing with the pricing on the website. But, hey, whatever. Still a pretty cool piece. Um, you know, like I said, if it's something where uh, you're going to use uh, this thing for just about any, you know, your everyday uh, uh, use, I think it's a, a pretty cool, pretty cool piece. So go to Samsung.com, check out uh, the Watch 5 Pro Golf Edition, and uh, maybe it fits into uh, your holiday plans. You know, get yourself something nice for uh, for golf. But uh, I think that's all I've got today. Those two items there. Um yeah, I mean, I don't know uh, what else to say. So I'm going to do, I totally forgot to do my Q&A yesterday. Maybe I'll do it today, um, you know, Thursday. I totally forgot to do it today. I'll try to do it today. Um, if you want to follow me at Club Junkie Pod, I'll do my usual uh, Q&A for the week and answer some questions you guys may have about some of the new stuff that's out there and uh, talk some shafts, some clubs, some, you know, grips or whatever. And then, uh, yeah, so follow me on there. If you're watching this on YouTube, please subscribe, click the bell, notification bell, all that jazz. I mean, I know it's a pain in the butt, but it definitely does help our kind of algorithms. And the same thing if you're wherever you listen to the podcast, you know, if you could follow, subscribe, like it, whatever options you have, um, it's always huge. So I uh, really appreciate it. I always, as, as I always say, I always truly appreciate you guys listening, following along, um, if it wasn't for you guys, I, I wouldn't be doing this and I would be working a, a normal job. So I, uh, I truly do appreciate it. I'm truly grateful for, uh, for you guys spending time uh, with me every week or whatever you do. So anyway, have a great week. Hopefully I was going to a safe one, get out, play some golf if you can, and, uh, we'll chat next Thursday.